If you've been in the online street photography space for a while, you've likely come across the Ricoh GR series. There are several iterations of this camera, including the Ricoh GR3X, which for some bizarre reason retails brand new for about $1,000. But don't worry, in this video, I have put together a copycat fake Ricoh GR3X for less than $300. And I've put together a spreadsheet full of data to prove it. Quick TLDR on the camera behind this fake Rico. This is the Sony NEX5. While I'm using the NEX5 in this particular setup, we can actually recreate this setup with any of the budget Sony cameras from the NEX or the A5000 line. Really all you need for this combination is a super compact Sony E-mount camera that is also more affordable than a Ricoh. If you'd like to know more about the NEX5, I have done a whole video on it, which you can watch up here or in the description. Before we can create a fake Ricoh camera, we have to first understand what is a Ricoh? And most importantly, why is a Ricoh? The Ricoh GR series is an APS-C size sensor camera with kind of a street aesthetic and street marketing. The cameras are famous primarily for their size, image quality, snap focus feature, portability, and kind of stealthiness. And a fixed 28 mm full frame equivalent lens which on the GR3X was changed to a 40mm lens. Weirdly, for many street photographers, the ones who mainly shoot film, when they shoot digital, it's either Ricoh or Fujifilm that are like the acceptable digital cameras for them, rather than something like Sony. Nobody wants to give love to Sony, or even Nikon or Canon. The fixed 28mm full frame focal length and the 40mm full frame focal length of the Ricoh GRs is part of the draw for street photographers. These are two popular street photography focal lengths, and to be honest, if you put a focal length like that in a camera, we're going to be interested in it, much like the success of the full Fujifilm X100 line having a 35mm full frame equivalent fixed lens focal length. So now that we understand the parts that create a Ricoh camera, what parts are we going to put together to be able to create our own. So the NEX5 is our camera behind this fake Ricoh, and this offers much of the same ergonomic minimalism that you find on the Ricoh GRs. However, this has an added bonus of having a tilt LCD screen, which is great for waist level shooting. The lens we're using on this setup is the TTR to sound 27mm f2.8 autofocus lens. For those of you who aren't aware, TTR Artisan typically make manual focus lenses. This is the first autofocus lens of theirs I've had the opportunity to try, but so far they've done a great job with the autofocus, although it has a couple of quirks. Bonus points to this lens that it has a Fuji-esque physical aperture ring, which kind of helps you have a Sony slash Fuji slash Ricoh street photography baby. I hear you, I hear you, you at the back. You want to see some numbers. Numbers, oh yeah, I got some numbers. Allow me to inform you with my scientific research displayed in this spreadsheet, the people versus the fake Ricoh GR3X. Here, here on my spreadsheet, I have listed every iteration of the Ricoh GR series alongside the NEX5. I realize the resolution might not be very high, so I'll have to show you it as an overlay. The NEX5, of course, its specs are combined with the TT Artisan 27mm lens because all the Ricohs are fixed lens cameras. We have criteria such as resolution, AF points, AF type, shutter type, size and weight, hashtag no judgment, and burst mode shooting frames per second. And of course, of course, price, because value among all else. We can see as I have set things up, the NEX5 slots in comfortably, in my opinion, between the Ricoh GR2 and the Ricoh GR3, while actually having the 40mm focal length of the Ricoh GR3X. And because of the benefit of the interchangeable lens mount, this camera can actually pretend to be either an early Ricoh GR with a 28mm focal length or the later Ricoh GR3X with the 40mm focal length, all for the cost of less than a brand new Ricoh GR camera. The setup is slightly bigger and heavier than the Ricohs, but for me that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make in terms of the savings in cost and also versatility of the lenses you invest in and the camera system itself. With this one camera, the NEX5, having its interchangeable lens mount means I can have a 40mm equivalent lens and also a 30 but let's say 28mm equivalent lens here, meaning I can have all of this together to give me kind of a Ricoh GR2 slash 3 and a Ricoh GR3X all together for less than the price of a single new Ricoh. To me, 
this seems like the better bargain buy. Diving deep into the TTR Artisan 27mm lens, it is well built. It's a mixture of plastic and metal. The aperture ring has a very nice click to it and is nice to use. It has a very, very small filter thread, which can be difficult if you like to interchange filters. It's a 39mm filter thread, which I'm used to most of my lenses being 49mm. Small detail, but one I thought I should mention. The rear lens cap that comes with the lens actually has a USB port in it. In order to facilitate firmware updates, which you can just do by plugging in the rear lens cap into a computer while connected to the lens. However, those firmware updates can only be completed using a Windows computer, which since I've had this lens, I have not had the opportunity to borrow someone's Windows computer in order to do these firmware updates, which might fix some of the issues I'm gonna talk about with this lens. This lens does suffer from a couple of issues which might affect the way you shoot. I found these issues to occur and affect my images in very specific situations, whereas the rest of the time I was able to get responsive and good results. The main issues are with the images, some flaring when aiming towards a light source, and some vignetting even when stopped down to something like f7.1. And then in terms of shooting, the issues that I faced were autofocus hunting, but only in the very edge of the frame. Anything kind of middle center was very fast and responsive but in the edges you could get a little bit of pulsing happening, potentially also where the vignetting is coming from. I have put together a couple of the images that I think have less perfect optics, like this frame here for example, we have quite a lot of lens flaring going on. This frame as well is just afterwards. A lot of lens flaring when pointing at a light source, which is not what we want. Besides this, a lot of the images actually come out super clean and I think do a good job of showing what this combination can do in a street photography context. And in terms of being snappy autofocus, this is a good example of someone walking by, me pointing sort of center focus point and the lens being super responsive with the NEX5. It's only really in those edge cases, like this shot here for example, the focus point was right to the edge and it took me a few tries just to get this shot in focus because of how much it pulses in the edge. But for the most part I think this lens performs extremely well within a street with close-up and far away subjects and also remains quite discreet that people don't really notice you when you're shooting. These two images I'm about to show you are good examples of where the vignetting is far too much. So we have around the bright corners of this frame, of which should just be a completely clear blue sky, we have really heavy vignetting, even at like f7.1. And same in this wide version, the horizontal version of this frame, we also get a lot of vignetting. Going back to the lens flare problem, this shot I think actually shows a benefit of having an imperfect lens because those previous shots I showed you, the lens flare was very distracting. Whereas here, the lens flare kind of gives a light leak aesthetic. I've had problems with light leaks on one of my old film cameras that did this kind of edge effect that I actually was a fan of. It's kind of ghosty, a little bit in the edge. And I think this shot with the father and his two kids, actually, this makes it look a bit more film-like. But of course, this is like a very specific situation. We still have flare it's definitely not perfect optics but it's a lot better than just having like a landscape ruined by a horrible lens flare the strength of this lens and why people go out and buy a Ricoh GR3X is the 40mm full frame equivalent focal length. The focal length sits nicely just above 35mm while not being super tight like a 50mm, which is totally subjective on whether or not that's an advantage to you if you prefer longer focal lengths or wider. The main takeaway from this focal length is that it is comfortable for people who are a bit shyer on the street photography side and you don't want to get up in a crowd close to people, you can be a little bit more reserved and held back while still having a nice field of view to be able to fill your frame with your subject. This is my second 40mm equivalent focal length lens. The only other one was the Sony 40mm G lens, which I absolutely loved. That was for full frame, whereas this is for APS-C. It is a very nice focal length. It's not one that I have continued to use. I sold that G lens, but it is definitely one worth trying, especially at this price point. I found shooting with this camera and lens together to be a very pleasant handful to be able to carry around and shooting as kind of a pocket sized camera. It doesn't feel like a large and obvious setup, but it also doesn't feel too amateur or too much like a phone. 
I think especially because of the manual aperture ring and also having the slightly tighter 40mm focal length, it does feel like a nice decent bit of camera once you have all the settings ready on the back of the NEX5. While it might not fit in any old trouser pocket, it will fit in jacket pockets and very, very small bags. So it's not quite the super thin factor of the Ricoh, but it's much closer to that than it is to a full mirrorless camera. While I completely understand you might be concerned that this is an APS-C size sensor with only 14 megapixels of resolution. Yes, that is something you could be rightly concerned about, but let me be very real with you. I have done videos talking about the PowerShot G9, which is 12 megapixels and honestly, super fun to shoot with and I have no complaints about the files. And also, I quite regularly shoot with my Sony a7S III in street photography because it has the best viewfinder on any mirrorless camera and it has a lovely shutter and it's my only full frame camera left now. I'm now on APS-C and full frame. That's only got 12 megapixels. I have no problem with those 12 megapixel files from the a7S III. Very rarely am I cropping in heavily in any significant way that would make me annoyed at not having a higher resolution sensor. This lens and camera might not be your thing. And to be honest, the Ricoh GR3X might not be your thing at all. Maybe you're more into the Fuji X100V, for example. Well, you're in luck. I actually made this video on making a fake Fujifilm X100V using a Micro Four Thirds kit that totaled less than $500 all in. 